What we're looking at today is RFID reading with the Raspberry Pi. Got a Model B connected to LAN. I SSH access into it, which we'll see later. The GPIO breakouts provided by Adafruit, the T cobbler. There's a lot going on in this breadboard, which I apologize for. These are previous videos and projects. But if you can make out the T cobbler here in the middle, it gives you a breakout to all the pins. And this is a really nice setup. I like this system a lot. Because what I usually do is on my breadboard in the left power rail, I use the 3.3 volt signals from the cobbler breakout in the Raspberry Pi. And then on the right side, power rail, I'll have the 5 volt from the breakout, which is the actual raw USB power that the Raspberry Pi is using. That way I've got 3.3 volt and ground on the left, 5 volt and ground on the right to use with various devices. Now really the th thing we're looking at the most is just the RX pin to the UART, which we'll talk about later. Everything else is from other projects, so I apologize for that mess. But this guy is one of the things we're going to need for RFID reading with the parallax module. This is a logic level converter from SparkFun. It's a real simple setup. What you're going to need on the right side, this is also clearly documented on the product page for SparkFun, which I'll link to in the description. You're going to need positive and ground for the high voltage, which is the 5 volts, which is on the right power rail of the breadboard. That's simply connected up. Then the yellow wire is the yellow wire S out from the parallax reader itself. So this is the 5 volt UR serial data. On the left side of the chip you need ground and positive for the low voltage which is the left power rail 3.3 volt on the main motherboard or um, main breadboard. And then this yellow wire from the top pin as well is the 3.3 volt signal that the logic level converted down which goes to the RXD port on the cobbler which you probably can't make it out because it's going to be a bad video but if you have the cobbler or if you're looking at any pinout image on the website RXD is clear it's on the right side um, that's all you need really that's kind of a basic setup and the parallax reader itself is a 5 volt device hence the need for that logic level converter 5 volts positive ground then there's this pin called enable which is the blue blue wire here I set it to ground if you keep it low, you're going to get the red LED, which means it's, it's go, it's ready to read, it's going to read right now. If it's the green LED, that means it's not reading. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but if you, you can set it to not read by setting enable to high. Which, for the demonstration, I just keep it low on the 5 volt breadboard side on the, on the right rail. And then the yellow one is, we spoke about earlier, S out, serial out, 2400 baud. It's normal 8 8 bits, no parity, but just 2400 baud's, but to keep in mind it's not um, 9600 or anything else that you've seen around. So that serial out for 5 volt logic is just going in, again, to the top channel pin, if you want to call it that. 5 volt in, 3.3 out, 3.3 to UART, receive. We're transmitting from the RFID, receiving to the Raspberry Pi, which, you know, it's all relative to the way you want to look at it. But basically, we'll go ahead and SSH in, into the Raspberry Pi itself and show you the interface. Okay, what we have here real quick on the web browser side, I'll add this link in the video description. It's from Adafruit. It's the instructions on how to free up the UART on the Raspberry Pi because it's actually being used by default for the Linux kernel so that you can hook a serial cable to it and you'll see the data <clears throat> as it's booting up or running or whatnot. It's very, very simple, but uh, just in case you're not familiar, I'll run through it real quick. It's not going to be the same as you see step by step because I've already, um, I've already went through this, so the things I have to comment out or the things that are removed are already there. But just to show you real quick, this first line, the uh, DWC underscore OTG dot LPM enable equals zero. Keep that there. And then your console it used to say TTY AMA zero, which is the device for the serial port you are. So change that to TTY1, which is you know, your normal um, TTY output. And that's real easy. And then usually uh, control O to save, control X to exit. And then you want to sudo nano edit as far, um, same as you did before, um, init tab there. And that's going to, on the bottom, last line, also opens up a spawn to get a Raspberry Pi. See right here where the, the uh, comment out is. It's like I do, just comment it out in case you want to leave it there for later, um, just 
you know, pound it out, but no big deal. And then control O to save, control X to exit. And then you'd want to do sudo reboot just to make sure it takes effect. But uh, I'll put this link up on the video so you can see. Um, in my Python folder here, I've got a very simple um, RFID script, import serial library. Go ahead and open a serial device, dev tty ama0. For the Parallax RFID smart card reader, it runs off 2400 baud. So you're going to want that in there to be able to talk at the right baud rate to the reader itself. I put a timeout in there just to keep it from freezing. And a forever while loop, just to keep it real simple, string reads in 12 characters. There's 10 characters for the actual RFID fob number, but Parallax puts a character leading and a character at the end. So you want to go ahead and read all 12 data there. But if you're reading nothing, then continue the script. Just keep running through if it's not reading anything. But if it does read something in this else clause, you want to go ahead and pull the characters 1 through 11, because you, you want to get rid of the front character and the rear character, because that's just junk. And then I'll print it right to the screen, so that'll just be your tag. Um, this is a test if statement, if string equals, and then I put in the actual RFID fob number, and print got it. So that's, that's a pretty neat little uh, feature, just to show that it's understanding and recognizing. But I'll go ahead and uh, run it now, and as by default you're not going to see anything. You actually have to put a tag up to the reader, which I'm doing off screen. And you'll see I just held it for a couple seconds, and you're getting, here's another tag, and you're getting the data. So that way you can see it's working, control C to exit. Um, and just to play around, let me take this one, because I don't have that RFID tag. Um, it's in the code itself. So let me go ahead. Put that in there. We'll rerun. Put a tag in. Now it's understanding that that's the tag where it prints got it. It's recognizing the if statement's working. If you're their tag, it's not. So it's it's a really simple script just to get it working. And you know, here you go. You got specific little clauses in here that you can take action on based on these uh, based on these tags, which makes it a lot of fun. This is the way the robot works. The rover Pybotnix B, if you've seen it on a low level. It reads these tags in, but there's a, there's also a web interface that goes to the LiveBots website, and it gets a little bit more complicated like that. But this is the basic setup on how to uh, you know free your serial port, your UART, thanks to Adafruit. Really easy instructions there. Now you can use it with devices, in this case the 2400 baud Parallax RFID reader. That is a 5 volt device, so it does need to be logic level step down, as I was showing you with the, with the board itself, that little PCB from SparkFun. So it's running off 3.3 volt serial rather than 5 volt serial, so you don't burn out your Raspberry Pi. And connect it to the receive port on the UART for Raspberry Pi, which is clearly labeled on any of the Adafruit cobbler breakouts, or you'll see it on any pinout on the web coming from the uh, low voltage output on that logic level converter. And you're, uh, you're good to go. You'll be reading RFID tags and with Python, like, just like this code. It'll be really simple. There's a lot of links in the description, so go ahead and uh, check that out for me. And I hope you had fun on with this one. Thanks for watching.